everyone in the Sabio Phoenix here, and we're back again with yet another random ass anime review. And this time we're taking a look at an OVA of two episodes called Shin Karate Jigoku Hen. So this one is considered as a martial arts and was created by someone who is very influential in that being Iki Kajiwara, the same guy that put out stuff like Eshita no Jo, Tiger Mask, and one of the more recent year ones being a Megalobox. So yeah, the guy has definitely made some really cool stuff, but today, we're taking a look at one of the most weirdest things he's ever created. So let's get moving along and start talking about the story, and this won't take long at all because it is a very simplistic one. So it stars our main character, Daito, who happens to be a karate master, and he was a veteran from World War II. And after rescuing a girl named Fran, she tells him about a backstory about how uh, she's trying to get revenge on this Nazi guy who tortured uh, one of her family members. And she asks Daito to take care of him, and he's just like, Well, that's a sad story and all, but I just don't like killing people. So instead, she ends up tracking the guy himself, and then she ends up getting captured, and then once he gets note of this, he tries to rescue her and also has to take down those piece of shit characters. So as I said, one of them is a Nazi, and then the other one is some fat bitch. And that is pretty much episode one. Of course, I'll get into specific stuff later, but of course I'm not gonna get into spoiler stuff. But yeah, that's episode one. As for episode two, he ends up going to New York, and he ends up getting stuck between two different gangs, being a New York mobster who happens to have a lot of pro wrestlers uh, working for him. And then there's a Chinese Kung Fu guy who is trying to open up a new school over there. And both of these two characters act just as shitty as the Nazi guy from the first episode. So yeah, that's the most I can say out of that. But before we move on to the other things, one important thing I do want to mention real quick is that this film is pretty much an exploitation film in the sense that there is a lot of graphic content in here that would not fly today. Just to go over some examples is that there is a lot of sexual content in here that is pretty graphic and deprived. Now if you're like me and you've seen a lot of really fucked up things in anime, for an example, like one of the most fucked up anime movies ever made, Midori, then you could sit through this no problem, it'll be a breeze for you, but if you're not used to seeing that type of stuff and you don't like it whatsoever, which is perfectly understandable, then yeah, don't watch this shit. And lastly, there is quite a bit of racist stuff within this anime. I'm not gonna get too heavy into it here, but yeah, there is a few moments where I'm just like, wow, yeah, they would not get away with that today. So knowing these two things in mind, you have been warned. So now let's get moving on and start talking about the animation. And the animation this one, it's passable in parts. Now I will go out and say that the animation here I think is definitely a lot better than that, uh, that Beast Fighter Apocalypse shit, but it's still not particularly good. If anything, it's mediocre at best. Probably the nicest thing I can say about the animation is that there is a couple fight scenes that are kind of badass looking, but I do feel like that they could have looked even better if they had a bit more of a better budget for this. But even with what they have here though, I could say it's at least okay and somewhat entertaining. But other than that though, yeah, everything else about this is, like I said, either mediocre or below average. So a lot of the characters in this one, they don't look very memorable to me. A lot of them are very generic looking. The backgrounds are okay, not too bad looking. And as for the blood and the gore, yeah, there's not a lot of detail here, and there's really not a whole lot I can say about it. And then as for, like, the whole graphic sex scenes that happen throughout this one, it's a bit more consistent than usual, which I guess at this point I'm not really surprised that that would be. But thankfully, they don't drag on too long, which is good, because some of them are pretty uncomfortable. But yeah, overall, the animation in this one is just very middle of the road, and sometimes it's barely passable. Now, as for the show's music, now this may surprise you, but I actually do kind of like the music for what it is. It's nothing super crazy, but I kind of like the vibe it has. It kind of gives me, like, 80s martial arts film, and I actually really dig that style, so I actually do think it actually works here. Also, there is one song in particular that kind of reminds me of a song from a, uh, a PC Engine CD game, which I think is kind of cool. And the ending theme is kind of like the same thing of what I've already said. It kind of sounds like an 80s martial arts film, and I like it a lot. I actually really like the ending theme a lot more than probably most people would. So yeah, that might surprise a lot of people, but I actually do kind of dig the music in this one. 
Now, obviously, I'm not gonna put it up there as, like, some of the greats, like, oh, I don't know, like, Yuki Kajura or something. But yeah, I could probably say this is my favorite part about this whole, uh, OVA series. And now, as for the show's voice acting, it's only in Japanese, so at this point, you know the saying by now. But I guess if I had to comment on one thing, is that some of the subtitles in this one are very questionable. But this was obviously done by fan works, which I think is, like, cool that something random like this got, uh, fan subbed. But, you know, I just gotta point out that, yeah, it does need a little bit of work, but it was understandable enough to get through. So now, as my overall thoughts on, uh, this weirdo one, is that this one is very all over the place, but I would say it's probably more piss poor than anything. Like, probably the best part for me, outside of the, the show's music, was that it had some pretty cool fight scene ideas, and you did get to see some shitty people get killed and get beaten up to shit, so that's kind of fun. But other than that, everything else about this show is just extremely average and is also just flat out dull. Like, a lot of the characters in here, I, I barely remember any of their names outside of just Daito and Fran. And given the amount of graphic content that this show has, yeah, this show is extremely hard to recommend to people. The only way I can really recommend it to someone is if they were desperately looking for a schlocky anime that you can just turn off your brain. And even at that, I do feel like there's like a lot of other schlocky animes that you can turn off your brain and enjoy so much more than this one. And speaking of other animes, when I was watching this one, I couldn't help but think of the anime uh, Violence Jack, the three-episode OVA that I covered a couple of years ago. That one does have its problems and inconsistencies, and overall I did find it to be fairly average, but it was at least somewhat watchable if you were in the mood for some schlocky stuff. And as I was watching the first episode of this one, I was kind of thinking, you know, would I put this on the same level as Violent Jack? And then I watched episode two, and then I was like, yeah, on second thought, I think Violent Jack is way better than this. So I feel like that should at least tell you something of how I feel about this one. And as for the manga for this one, well, it better be damn better than this shit.